is going on, lunatics? Guys, lunatic French, my people. I want to talk to you about Luna Classic. I'm going to give you quite a bit of information. At some point, we're going to incorporate some of the broader market to give you an idea of what to expect. I'm not here to make you a better investor. I'm not a financial advisor. But I do want to try to keep you as informed as possible what is going on in the Luna Classic community. I try to do that every day. But sometimes I get full of myself. Um, I want to talk more than I want to inform or I want to give you my opinion more than I want to try to give you the news or teach you or, you know, in, in, I, sometimes I get self-centered and what this is, is going to be an attempt to try to avoid that. I'm going to try to break down for you the best I can the news. Now, if you like this kind of content, I'm going to do this for a few days and we're going to see how it goes. It's going to be a little bit longer form than the normal videos. I'm also down in the description down below. If you want to help me out uh, in any way so that I can continue to keep doing this, there's going to be a donation wallet. There's going to be, you can super chat, you can do you know whatever it is to support me and sign up for MEXE if you want to do some Luna Classic trading uh, or sign up for NordVPN, any one of the sponsors down in the bottom. So that's how you help me and that's how you support me as a channel and make sure that you hit that like and subscribe button. It does wonders to help me out. So again, it's going to be a little longer form than what we normally do. So you will hear me talk a little bit about Luna Classic in ways that maybe we haven't before or more in depth than before. We're going to cover a lot more news than we've covered before because we're going to try to every single day, as best we may, do a deep dive into Luna Classic so that you guys are as informed as possible. And if you like it, you share it with people and we have a big conversation every single day. So for starters, we're going to start with today, Terraform Labs. Terraform Labs has uh, filed a bankruptcy. Now, that's common knowledge. Uh, today, however, Terraform Labs claims that it doesn't operate to gain profits, which is a very odd thing for a for-profit driven company to say, especially a cryptocurrency project that probably predominantly is all about profit. So it, it sat a little bit weird with me when I first saw it, but here's what it says. Chris Amani, which uh, you might remember, Chris Amani was on uh, Lunk Live not that long ago talking about Terraform Labs and you know how it applies to Luna and Luna Classic. And we've got some information about that coming very soon. But he emphasizes the company's nonprofit focus, citing crypto collapses in recent court filings. Amani states that, the en that entering bankruptcy position, Terra Labs, for a stronger comeback in the crypto industry. And... Uh, he aims to restore its reputation following the significant 2022 crypto collapse. So um, now we should probably first kind of bridge this so that you remember Terra and Luna were in and of themselves an ecosystem that included the Anchor Protocol. Terra was your stable coin, your, your peg to $1 um, algorithmic fungible token. And then you had Luna which was the uh, token for the original token, which the basis behind that was to be a faster form of Bitcoin. And the Anchor Protocol was the lending, staking, liquidity protocol that was allowing for money to be moved around in this ecosystem. Go read up on it. We won't get into too much detail about this, but just know that those are three very important things. So... Uh, Terraform Labs asserts in a court filing that opting for bankruptcy enables the company to emerge stronger. In a recent court filing, Amani asserts that Terraform Labs had been channeling all its earnings back into the company, aiming to foster its growth. Now, we've seen a lot of buys lately uh, of them kind of scooping up businesses. The primary goal in the initial years was not profit. In fact, the debtor does not currently operate to gain profit. All revenue earned is expected to be reinvested in the business and the Terra blockchain ecosystem. Well, the question would be, how can a business run if it's not about profit? Well, it pays it's it pays people, and there we do have a filing so that you can understand that. Uh, and you're and you're welcome to look. We're not going to look all the way through it, but there is something that you'll be able to look at. Furthermore, 
Armani declared Amani declared that entering bankruptcy positions Terraform Labs to bounce back and re-enter the crypto industry more robustly than before, which would indicate most probably a rebuilding of Luna in that ecosystem. By utilizing the Chapter 11 process and the tools made available by the bankruptcy code, the debtor hopes to emerge as a reorganized and stronger enterprise for the benefit of all stakeholders. Uh, Terra Luna Classic, Terraform Labs native token, has been declining in recent times, dropping around 29% over the last 30 days. At the time of location, it stands at 409777. Now, it's had a bigger dip this evening, brought on by a broad sell off in the market, brought all around by good news in the American market. Now, when there's good news in the American market, it leads to a sell off in the market that's usually backlash or a liquidity sweep. And we usually see the reverse of that happen the next day. So I'm a firm believer that if we're down $20 billion today, we'll be up $30 billion tomorrow. Uh, if that makes sense, maybe even $40 billion or $50 billion. It seems like it'll be a good day tomorrow. That is not 100%, but it does tend to run that way when you're dealing with the American market. So uh, last week on January 22nd, B in Crypto reported that Terraform Labs had filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy in the uh, United States District of Delaware. Now, we're going to move on from this for just a moment, and we're going to come back to it in just a second. Uh, next up, what's happening with Terra Luna Classic? And there are three things specifically that have been going on. Okay, there's the Terra Classic upgrade vote. Just a few days back, the developers at the L1TF, the brains behind Terra Luna Classic, uh, had their core security upgrade package proposal up for voting. It's a step that came at the right time, given the various challenges faced by Lunkle Rich Revival Journey and the hopes for USTC repeg despite a significant effort uh, from crypto exchange Binance last year. Proposal 12008 named L1T4 Classic Core Security Upgrade Package was up for voting on the station wallet. The goal was to enhance the security and stability of the chain by upgrading its core components. Additionally, uh, a step forward meeting the infrastructure needs for TFL support. Uh, then we had number two, Terra Luna Classic passed pay per job proposal. This came a little bit previously, but uh, this meant that there was no uh, the allocation of funds was going to be on a per job basis. So if you, uh, as a developer, came up and you had an idea for something, then you know you could put in a proposal and get paid for that job. The community wasn't entirely on board with the monthly model of roadmap and payment planning, which is where we were doing quarterly payments and monthly payments. So they decided to shake things up and switch to a pay per job model. Now, if we're doing the right things, then it should really kind of indicate that we're going up in price. And you will notice that we are not. And I'm going to explain that. I'm not telling you it's a bad thing, by the way. I'm just telling you that it is a thing at this point. The support for the proposal was overwhelming with a whopping 91.99% .99 of yes votes and others mostly opting to abstain. So the validators were largely voting yes, except or they were abstaining. So uh, the validators seem to like the fact that progress and guys listen if you have a, a group of employees that are doing a job you have a reasonable expectation that they are doing the job you can oversee you can monitor uh as a community it's difficult for us to monitor by the way uh, we can only set goals and if it's not achieved refuse to continue payment so just to keep that in mind so i'm not saying that this is a better or worse system i'm just saying that when you have a uh, team working diligently or around the clock if you will and they're being paid every month then uh, you continue to pay them based on certain expectations. If they don't get achieved, then you stop. And I want to say I feel like with management, it gives it a greater level of reach. I just want to say that. If you pay by job, then whether the job is or is not done, uh, those people are going to get paid and uh, they're, they're going to be able to, to listen. Um, there are certain things that I think we need to address. I don't know the correct answer for it all right now. Over the next few days, we'll kind of dig into this. I'm not a big fan of the paper job proposal for a reason, and we're going to get into that one in just a second here. Out of the 56 validators, 49 gave a nod to the proposal, and seven decided to safe with stay safe with an abstain. The big names in the validation game included all nodes. Orion, Interstellar, Stakely, Stakeman gave their approval. With L1TF transitioning into a maintenance mode for quarter four, there's a bunch of tasks waiting in the wings uh, for attention on Terra Classic, things that are no longer being done. Okay, uh, Again, that's not bad or good, but this is a slow a process down. 
The switch to a paper job approach is expected to handle these tasks more efficiently. So we'll see if they do. Moving forward, new job listings can be proposed through governance and text proposals, complete with all the details, job titles, a thorough description, budget, and estimated duration. It's a fresh approach to get things done in Terra Classic. Terra Luna Classic security upgrade proposal was rejected in an update from the uh, community. It appears that the proposal for the core security upgrade has hit a roadblock. The community has decided to reject the proposal, and one of the reasons cited for the rejection was the influence of proposal 11889. This earlier proposal introduced a pay-per-job approach for development, um, including one notable, like all node, voted no on the core security upgrade, pointing to the preference for the pay-per-job model. It's a clear indication of the community's stance on development approach within the Terra Classic ecosystem. Now, I, I, I disagree with that uh, fundamentally, but we are a community, so... Uh, in a turn of events, the Terra Luna Classic community has rejected the L1T4 Security Upgrade Package Proposal 12008, okay, uh, despite its importance for boosting the chain's security and stability. So um, it doesn't seem to be, and by the way, we're not insecure at, at this point, and we're not unstable at this point. So that sounds kind of baited when you look at it, but I don't think so. Um, one validator emphasize the broader consequences, stating blocking pull requests not only impede the immediate progress of the chain, but also have a far-reaching consequence. Um, now, let's look at this right here. Key validators. I want to, I'm going to do this. We're going to do this, okay? I want you guys to see something that we're going to address. It's going to come up in just a few moments here. Key validators, including all nodes, Interstellar Lounge, Interstake One, Moon Rabbit Validator, and Lunk Dow voted against the proposal, Okay. One validator emphasized the broader consequences, stating blocking pull requests not only impedes the immediate progress of the chain, but also has far-reaching conquests, diminishing collaborative spirit and trust within the community. This can ultimately hinder the long-term success and sustainability of Terra Classic. In response to the previous paper job proposal, validator Lunk Live introduced 12013 to repeal the paper job. Lunk Live looking at it and saying, you know, this is really a bad idea. And I tend to agree with them at this point. Now, you might know, uh, I have done work for Lunk Live and, and Mr. Diamond Hands uh, before in, in a pay model. So uh, I I do um, uh, I, and I did that not because um, not because he paid me, but because he and I had an agreement on terms that I agreed with the way that he was approaching Luna Classic. So that led to hey, would you do this? And I said sure. Uh, give me a few million tokens. And, and by the way, just for emphasis on that, when it comes to Luna Classic, um, I, I'm, I'm long term here. Uh, I don't get paid for these videos or anything like that. That's why I rely on you to support me. It, it doesn't really come from you know, anything within the community or, or anything like that. Um, this proposal argues that the pay per job approach led to uncertainty and confusion among the community. So now let me go back here and let me point out one more time the key validators that voted against this upgrade that didn't want, let's, and we're going to call it progress because more security and stability does mean progress. All nodes, Interstellar Lounge, Interstake One, Moon Rabbit, and Lunk Dow. So now uh, we're going to go to someone that I think you guys trust, that I think you guys find to be a trustworthy soul in this crypto landscape. And his name is right here. Happy Caddy Crypto. Now, I'm not subscribed to his channel because I don't watch him. I uh, do in the last couple of days because I really wanted to see what it is that he had in his opinion because he has decided to step away from Terra Classic for a little while. He's not liking some of the things that he's seeing. So let's talk about some of the things that he's seeing. Okay. Uh, now, a lot of it at first was kind of speculation. So when we come through here, what you're going to find, and by the way, I would encourage you, you can go over here and you can look up here, by the way, uh, see right up in the, the, the top realm up here, uh, right up this way, right there. You can see where I'm highlighting. That's where you can go in order to download all of these documents so that you can see for yourself that they're valid. Okay. Um, so this is what Happy Caddy, as he's going through, uh, starts to reveal. Uh, and he reveals in going through all this that somehow or another, there's a deal with somebody called Deal. 
and that this company is getting paid $92,000. The debtor, this, this remits approximately $92,000 per month to one specific person. And this name is going to ring familiar because you saw it a few minutes ago. It's right there. Moon Rabbit. So somehow, Moon Rabbit, who voted against these proposals, who was trying to slow down progress on this chain, for some reason, Moon Rabbit is being paid and compensated in some way by Terraform Labs. Terraform Labs has nothing to do with Luna Classic. They are here for Luna and the Luna ecosystem. So that should, in some way, make you question what exactly is going on. Why is that happening? Now, uh, we're going to take this a step further, and I'm going to suggest that you go watch this video. I'm not going to digest it for you. I'm just going to tell you that as we go through this process, you will see that it is explaining that the money that it's doing has to go through Moon Rabbit. Uh, for videos and services, providers do not see digital assets for payment. The debtor has established a system whereby it transfers the necessary digital assets to pay specific vendors to a designated third-party service provider, Moon Rabbit Labs. So Moon Rabbit Labs, Moon Rabbit Validator, is working for Luna, not Luna Classic. Now, in the event that you might consider just for you to think about here, if for any reason a lot of people on a project stuck with the original project, and never migrated to the V2. For example, they stuck with Luna Classic instead of Luna. Does it prohibit that secondary project, Luna in this case, uh, from moving forward and, and accelerating their growth? Well, the answer to that should be uh, seen in the fact that Luna Classic still has a $535 million market cap and the stable coin that's no longer stable has a $215 million dollar market cap. Now, that in itself is $700 million worth of market cap. How far would that go towards Luna? So, something to consider as we have this conversation a little bit further. Now, um, for vendors and service providers that do not scope, et cetera, et cetera. So anyway, what we establish here is Moon Rabbit. Now, there is a date where uh, the, the arrangement started, okay? And this date started, and by the way, I'm just kind of sliding this over because I watched it before, but November 4 of 2022, why is that date important? That's a question that Happy Caddy is actually, I think, pleased to kind of answer here. They did business with Moon Rabbit starting November 4, and then what else happened on or around November 4? Now, uh, after he finishes up all of this, then we go to this piece right here. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and put this in the screen. Distribute 4 million chains off asset towards revitalization. That's not what we're looking for. We witness at this point, uh, this, this 4 million off chain for, you know, whatever it is that's going on suddenly shows up. And then this person out of nowhere suddenly shows up. Bilbo Baggins. Now that is a major person that's been involved in fudding Luna Classic, favoring Luna. Now, there's one other person here, which uh, you might know, and you might see it here uh, as I go through it. Um, you might find this one to be interesting. Um, see if I can get a screen grab of it here. But if I don't, because he was going too fast for me, or I missed it. Uh, the other name that was associated with this, which I might have to be scrolling through here to find, is one. Um, yeah, I, I maybe maybe I'm not going to find it, but I, I assure you it's here. Uh, you can go watch it for yourself. But it was a Mr. Jebediah Shekelstein. Uh, and, and I am sure that you guys remember Jebediah Shekelstein. Uh, he of uh, he doxed plenty of people. He was uh, cancer to this community in the way that he was attacking it uh, and going after it in many, many, many different ways, and 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 revealing who people were in life. You know, a lot of different in in here. So 
I encourage you to go watch Happy Caddy Crypto's video. And then I would encourage you to go to these dockets and pull these up yourself and, you know, do yourself a favor and just have yourself a good read. You can peruse these and kind of check them out. So that will give you kind of a, a window into what is at this point a, a very obvious conspiracy theory. Now, when I say conspiracy theory, I say that because Cappy Caddy Crypto can't back that up. He can only put the pieces together. By the way, uh, the first time Jebediah Shekelstein showed up, November 4, 2022. Um, and Bilbo Baggins, five days before. So out of nowhere, we get these guys coming in to FUD the project at the same time. And that's at the same time, Moon Rabbit showed up. So now what we have is a conspiracy. No facts here. Just a conspiracy that that's could be a uh, wild coincidence, but maybe not. Now, what I've been telling you for days now is that the way people are voting is not adding up for me. We have no repeg. We have nobody pushing the repeg through. We have, and look, by the way, when I say this, I want to go back and I want to take you back in time to the first time uh the l1tf when they first had their website uh, a whole bunch of stuff like that repeg was the first quarter of 2023 okay i want you to think about that that was with ed kim um that was with alex forshaw that was with uh vegas i think was still there uh zaradar still around and they thought it was reasonable to be working on that in the first quarter of 2023. I'm here to present to you, we are in the first quarter of 2024. We have not repegged. We have not done anything to repeg. We did give $40,000 to Quant to come up with a proposal, not, not to do any repeg, but to come up with a proposal to repeg. And it's been submitted to centralized exchanges for four months now with we have no idea what's going on and I, and I, I'm not kidding you and I'm not making that up we have no idea what's going on I have an exchange which you can look up uh, on X with Redline Drifter one of the quant members who didn't appreciate the fact that I was calling it out and proceeded to argue the point along the way saying that you know they took forty thousand dollars to come up with a proposal not actually do work <laughs> you know and so now they just say they have to wait until somebody approves it and, and, and you know, until everybody goes over it and, and gives some feedback. So uh, for right now, we have nothing. Now, it also is known that TVM, which is another group, is actually working on a repeg and there might be an announcement soon. But that is a rumor and some wild speculation. We don't know whether or not that is true or not. What we do know is true so far is that everything that could be done to push this thing forward seems to get stifled and it's getting stifled by the largest validators that you give the power to. So you're giving power to these people. Now you could unstake and you could stake with somebody like a Lunk Live, but I don't know that Lunk Live, by the way, and, and I'm not, again, uh, I did make a deal with him a couple of months ago and he gave me a few million tokens for, um, for, for the project that I was working on with and through him. Uh, same thing with Fire Token, Levi. Um, they gave me um, uh, they gave me some money to do that. So uh, that's those were paid promos, and I told you guys they were paid promos. Right now, I'm not being paid. So uh, if you like Loon Lunk Live, and you like what they stand for, and you like the way they vote, you should give them more power. They now have 1,200 delegators, by the way. Uh, I do want to point that out because I did see uh, that Diamond Hands had posted Something about that, that they now have, yeah, right here. Uh, Lunk Live Validator just broke 1,200 delegates. So uh, they're ranked number 20 overall. You guys can make them stronger. You guys can make them weaker. That's your choice. You know, um, from what I understand, I like um, I like Diamond Hands, so I don't have any reason to doubt him or anything like that. But that's a decision that you have to make. But if you want to, unstake from all nodes. Unstake from all these guys and stake with somebody that you trust. If they're voting the way you want. And look, 
you can or you cannot decide where you're going to uh, put your tokens, but you can you can swap validators. Uh, you, you can swap your validators. Uh, it's pretty easy to do. So uh, just want to say that. Uh, so, but, but anyway, you, you've given these guys a lot of power to control what happens. And what do they do with that power? Uh, they consolidated their power. Now, when I say consolidate their power, that sounds nefarious. And the reason that it sounds nefarious is because it is. Uh, they took the number of validators from 130 to 100, and they changed the commission structure on it too. So not only does it benefit them at the top even better than it did before, uh, it creates a minimum uh, because, you know, we needed a minimum because they were just, you know, in some of it, it's about power, it's about control. So they were charging no fee. Now they have to charge a minimum of 5%. So, um, but you know, that's, for me, I'd be like, yeah, you know what? I, I, I like the fact that they're doing this because, you know, um, uh, like no fee helps me. I get more of my tokens back. So the, the hard argument with that is that gives somebody who's not doing it more power. And how do they make money with more power? Uh, they have more influence. And so what do they do? Uh, they change 130 validators down to a hundred. Um, so, you know, there are pieces here that don't make sense that fall into place. Why is Moon Rabbit, a Luna person that's paid uh, a ton of money by Luna every month, uh, voting and having a huge stake and a huge uh, flow or, or opinion or a huge, whatever you want to call it, huge influence on the Lunk ecosystem. And if they do, okay, because you can invest in two projects. But when you're invested in both of these projects, um, are you being honest with one or the other? And... It should be known, Luna Classic, Luna doesn't want you to exist. Luna wants you to buy Luna, not Luna Classic. They want you to give up what you're doing and let this thing die and come join them at Luna because it helps them. It validates what they're doing. So are they paying somebody to do that is the question. Now, they may not in a nefarious and sinister way. I, I am, I should, I should, I should say it's not nefarious they just it's business business is not sinister really uh they just it's better for them if you guys are working with them and making luna the the main thing instead of luna classic the main thing get a, get a get out of the dgen if you will so they're incentivizing people who are validators in the lunk ecosystem to be more luna centric and to stifle what's going on over here wild conspiracy i don't have anything to back it up other than i can see what's happening so again validate with who you want but um lunk live probably a good idea now moving on from the dockets over here we're gonna look at the price action just a little bit um so not good uh overall market is down 17 billion dollars on the day uh sell-off brought in part by the U.S. market, U.S. market uh, did not raise its rates today, but it didn't lower its rates. So the crypto total market cap is down about 18 billion from about two hours from the time of posting this. Uh, but Luna Classic, Luna Classic is down quite a bit, uh, down to uh, four zeros, 9352. Uh, you can see right here that we're just kind of wicking down here on the top and we're testing the top of this last consolidation range. And you can see uh, if I move it over here and then we kind of zoom out here, you can see that we're just bouncing off of this previous support line right here at this 93 range. Uh, if we can't get supported by that, then we're headed down a little bit further. And if we go down a little bit further, then you're looking at probably right there, eight, uh, 68. Yeah, we got a long way to go. So uh, we'll probably get a stop over here at about 78 or 8,000 right there. Um, as we kind of sweep through this little range right here, we might, you know, we might get bought up and we might get a nice little reversal, but, um, that's where, you know, that's, that's where everything looks like it is right now. If I move into the shorter time frames, then you can see right here, like I thought, you know, this would be the moment where we would kind of break out here. What happened was the exact opposite. The entire market started to capitulate. Uh, again, I think that this is probably a fake out before another big move up and we get caught up in that sometimes. I don't think that there's any fundamental reason. Uh, for the sell-off. Uh, Grayscale Bitcoin didn't do uh, anything bad that we were scared that it might do. 
you know, none of the bad things happened. So this is just market manipulation. Now, during market manipulation, it doesn't mean that Terra Classic is being manipulated. It means that uh, Bitcoin is being manipulated. And then, you know, we'll see what happens with Bitcoin. So, you know, if you look at that one, it's at about 42,000. And to be fair here, if you come over and look at liquidity, uh, and when I use a heat map, for those of you that don't follow me, uh, but I, look, I use a heat map that tells me where the money is, okay? So, and, and the crypto markets tend to hunt money. So it's been hunting down in here. So it looks to me like Bitcoin is probably coming down to about 41,500, which is this big, see this yellow right here on the screen? That's a big pool of liquidity right there. Uh, so it's going to go down in this range. Then after it goes into this range, most probably it looks like it's going to want to come up here into 44,000 because we're still bullish, okay? So uh, that's just how the markets work. But uh, we're, we're coming down here. People telling you 35, people telling you 36, people telling you 37. No, no, no. Hmm. There's no fundamental reason right now for the market to do that unless it's manipulation. So if there's manipulation involved, sure, it's possible. But it would take a lot of coordination and a lot for, for that kind of manipulation. And I don't know that we have that right now. So I digress. Um, short time frames, uh, we're looking at a lot of money outflow and we're looking at a weak RSI. So the RSI shows us that we're over uh, that we're oversold. And uh, an RSI like that, showing that we're oversold, should put us, along with the rest of the market, down here in a buy zone. Uh, if I were to zoom in here and start to look around here, then I'm sure that I would find in some of these time frames that there is a um, uh, probably a good chance that there it is right there. All right. So here we go. So you guys can see right here, uh, Luna Classic is in weak range probably due to come down right here just a little bit more when it does it tends to move fast like this one right here you see ckb just took a big big move up so uh looks like we're in range right now where we could bounce at any time we're in the weak category we're going to be down and oversold pretty soon so if we get into that range then expect a big bounce off luna classic last time we got into that range was right here and the bounce right here was up to 10.4 so you know be aware of what's happening right here. This is the shorter time frame. This is the one hour. Uh, when you look at the five minute time frame to see, you know, what it looks like in the last hour or so, guess what? It looks like the bleeding is kind of over right now. Uh, we've run back up to the 20. This is on the short time frame. We run back to the 20. Now the move is to the 50. Now the move is to the 200. And after that, if we successfully navigate those, then the next move is to use them as support. And then of course, um, the the this goes back up this way. This starts to turn back that way. This will slowly turn back that way. And we go bullish again if that happens the right way. So uh, that's what it looks like. Now on the daily, uh, if, we move, if we move out here on the daily, then you can see for the last couple of days, despite today uh, and, and yesterday, we've been overall bullish. Money flow has been coming in, it's not been going out. So um, it, it's a little bit weird when you see this. That usually reeks of manipulation. Markets being told, hey, you want to do we want we don't want some more security you know stupid shit stupid stuff like that so that's kind of what you're seeing happening right there now more broadly USTC same thing but you're seeing you know that waning and, and we're we're at the seven eight six right nine on the fib retracement of the on, on the fib retracement of this move here uh, which is uh, basically the the you know that's that's your good bounce zone you know you you would like to see. Uh, a move, but you're getting into this little range right here. And I told you guys that I don't think there's any catalyst right now. And I put this a couple of days ago and I really expected Luna, uh, a USTC to come on down here into this like uh, 1.5 cent range, 1.4, 1 1.2 cent range. And then we get a strong bounce off of that. Maybe I was hoping because I think that USTC has a big pump get ready to happen. You know, that it's probably going to do what it's done before a couple of times here. Uh, last time over here was come up to 7.8 cents not that long ago. Um, and, and then come back up here to like three and a half cents, four and a half cents, you know, just a nice big run. So, you know, I see that. I can see that happening. And if I can see that happening, then, you know, I like to get the best buy that I possibly can. So, and that's on the large time frames. On the shorter time frames, you're probably seeing a little bit of the same thing. You're seeing that green candle for the last hour. If I come to the five minutes, you're probably seeing, see it getting a nice little bounce here. You get a more aggressive bounce here. Then you're getting on Luna Classic, though, by the way, if you look at that on the five minute. Um, so it looks like a uh, little less active, but uh, recovery going pretty nicely. We'll see you know, whether it continues to recover. So that's kind of where the prices look. So what I would expect to see, 
Uh, my, my expectation of this price is that it'll probably, as long as the market stays robust and continues to move into the green overnight, uh, for the American market to probably pick up and go green tomorrow because it went red today and it was a Fed and usually there's a pivot thing that happens with these markets. So I would expect to see some upside. Now, the problem with the upside move is that Luna Classic upside looks like right about here at 94, maybe 95. There's not a lot of upside here unless we get a breakout. And if we get a breakout, then we're going to be looking at a rejection at the 20, the 50, and the 100. Those are the those are the ones. And you, you can look through here and you can see it over and over and over again. Uh, so uh, rejected on the 20, rejected on the 20, rejected on the 20, rejected on the 20, supported by the 20. Um, uh, rejected, rejected, rejected. See, we're, we're in this 20. The 20 kind of resonates here. We're way off the 20 right now. So it's going to be a pump up here to about 95. We're, we're going to get that. But then after we bounce off of that, we could see lower or we could flip this for support. Uh, we flip it for support. Then what happens is we're up here and then boom, we come up here and we start attacking this 50, which will be at the 9,700 range. And then we come up here at the 98, I will say 99, maybe range. Uh, let's see where that is. That's yeah, about 99. And then we're going to uh, hit the 200 MA and then we want to bounce that and use it for support. If we do that, then we get the zero back uh, and good game, bro. And then we get back to hopefully this long-term little trend line that we had kind of developed right here. And if that happens, then, you know, we're back up here at 10.4. So uh, that's kind of where the, the price action looks at it. It's, it's, this is variable. And I, I know, of course, I'm, I'm giving you kind of a range of scopes, but I don't know yet where this market broadly is going to go. Uh, I think I know that it's going up to 50,000 Bitcoin, but we have to see the move first. Now, with that, uh, moving to station, we've got a couple of proposals, Genuine Labs Community Spend Proposal. Uh, we've got Hodler, ARB trading bot, and algorithm. And then we've got the repeal proposal of 1189. And that was the one from uh, Lunk Live. And you can see here that the, the voting is. Uh, and by the way, go look and see who's voting which way. I mean, you, you can go back and you can look and you can see who's voting for what. Um, are they voting in your interest? Because if they're not voting in your interest, what the f are you doing? Go find people who support your interest and, you know, get supported by them. Don't just get screwed over by these other people. So that's a decision for you to make. Uh, but again, the governance proposals, uh, they look like this. They look like Genuine Labs, a community spend proposal on behalf of Genuine Labs. Uh, I believe that's, uh, I think this guy got kicked out before. Um, I, I I don't know for sure. Um, I want to say that um, I think maybe we were good with these guys at this point. But uh, on behalf of the Genuine Labs, I'm submitting this proposal for the work we have undertaken over the past four weeks. Our focus has been on implementing end-to-end -end tests, interchain, and addressing issues related to the packet forward middleware and IBC hooks. We have maintained transparency throughout the work by providing bi-weekly reports on our progress. You can find detailed updates of works in the following links, and there are hidden links there. Uh, the cost of these works is referred to as 16000 to be paid in Lunk from the community pool at the current exchange rate of 160 million Lunk. Now, uh, that, of course, means um, that in order to make profit, they're going to have to sell. So or they have to stake it and take out a loan against it and, you know, take the risk on. Uh, so, you know, we'll have to you, know, you have to decide whether or not this is a proposal that you want to support. And uh, but I don't have any reason not to. I just want to say that. So uh, you can check that out if you want. Uh, also, Hodler, arbitrage trading bot and algorithm. Guys, we don't, we don't do that. Um, so, And it doesn't look like we're getting very much in the lines of this repeal proposal. It's crucial to ensure that the revised proposal address and the concerns and interpretations of all stakeholders involved. And look, I, 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 again, I do not agree with these big validators uh, doing the things that they've been doing. So, you know, uh, take do whatever you want with your vote. But uh, I disagree with it fundamentally, what's happening right now. 27 million right now. Uh, in trading volume on Luna, uh, 13 million on USTC. Um, and then uh, I think I want to close this out with a little bit of a browse through the community portal. So uh, discussions that are being held right now that you might want to go check out. Uh, and then that's up here, commonwealth.im uh, slash Terra dash Luna dash classic dot dash Lunk uh, slash discussions. Uh, Global Lunk Burn Program update, an official rule set. You can go check this out if you want and and engage in the conversation there are a few comments uh then you come over here to dynamic voting rewards i'm thrilled to introduce a groundbreaking proposal that will revolutionize our community engagement uh by giving rewards for people to vote 
um, which, by the way, I'm not really a big fan of because uh, if I were doing that and I were told that I would get it rewarded for my vote, I have like 20 million lunk. Um, I would just be incentivized to create 20 wallets and collect 20 times. So I'm not sure that that's what I want to do. Uh, signal to provide incentive and liquidity on white whales dex for lunk ustc uh, again for you to kind of peruse and check out uh reduce slashing window for oracle voting and increase downtime jailing for people who've been jailed for some reason uh so go engage with these and decide for yourself what you think of them but be informed take your time to learn what's going on in this luna classic community now as we were going through this, I was learning a few things that I did not, uh, that I wasn't ready to discuss. So I kind of pushed them off. If you notice anything about this conversation where I look like oh, I'm not ready to talk about that, that was the reason. And the reason that I don't want to have that conversation is because I don't want to come off to you uninformed. I would rather at this point, just kind of steer this conversation away. Uh, we're at about 40 minutes right now. By the way, if you like this content, please make sure if you stuck around this long that you hit the like button and share this with your friends. You know, let people know. In Luna Classic, this is where they come or where they can come for information. I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to be a little bit biased. I do think that these people are not looking out for the better interest of the community in general. And I don't mind saying it. So, um, you know, you guys look through this and you let me know what you think. And, um, you know, together, maybe uh, I'll get some of these guys on the line. You know, we'll start talking to TVM. If I can get TVM on here, we can talk about the repay. We can talk about what it looks like. We can talk about... Um, you know, whether we could do a spread tax, if that is part of the equation, it may not be, uh, you know, what we could repeg USTC to, could we do it at two cents and then three cents and then four cents? And, you know, do we have a mechanism by which we do that and allow the burns to lower the amount of USTC? Maybe just burning the USTC to start off with is the only option. Maybe we need to have some control for it. There are a number of variables out there that we will have to consider going forward. So, uh, until next time, which should be uh, Friday, I want to say, uh, maybe we'll come out with another video. If there's enough content, we're going to do these big videos. And we're just going to do these grand things here where you guys can take a few moments and we can talk about Luna Classic and we can deep dive. If you have something that you would like to see addressed, the comments down below is where you would uh, let me know. And then I'll get into them and I'll start looking at them. And then we'll see whether or not um, they fit in this ecosystem, if we should support them or not. One of those things is going to be Fire Token from Levi pretty soon. We're going to be talking about that one probably on the next stream. Terra, the new um, cash tag T-E-R-R-A from Terraport. Uh, we're going to be talking about that one. Uh, just I think it just started trading on MEXE. And by the way, MEXE is one of the sponsors of the channel. So if you want to sign up for them, certainly helps me out tremendously. And they support Luna Classic. Also, we didn't talk about it, but Crypto.com is now changing their tune. And they're going to support Luna Classic and continue at least through April. So they backtracked a little bit about taking it off of the chain. So see that, guys? There's plenty of things that uh, we have to talk about. So uh, until next time, this is not financial advice. My name is Bleeves. I'm always right. Thank you so much for tuning in. And we'll talk to you again very, very soon.